This video we're going to talk about heat exchangers, which often involve both convective and conductive heat transfer between two fluids. We'll introduce the overall heat transfer coefficient, which is a convenient parameter that lumps the effects of those two things together and incor can incorporate fins and the effects of buildup on the pipe surfaces, negatively impacting heat transfer. There are many different types of heat exchangers, with the simplest being a double pipe or a concentric pipe heat exchanger. There is an inner tube and an outer tube through which a hot and cold fluid flow. Those fluids may be flowing in the same direction, which is the case for a parallel heat exchanger, or they may be flowing in the opposite direction, which is the case for a counterflow heat exchanger. You can see the temperature distribution for a parallel flow heat exchanger is distinctive. As the hot fluid and the cold fluid are flowing parallel to one another, they're getting closer and closer to thermal equilibrium. In the counterflow heat exchanger, the hot water enters at the opposite end of where the cold water, which has been heated up from its inlet temperature. So the temperature gradient between the neighboring streams is not as great as it is at the inlet of a parallel heat exchanger. Crossflow heat, ex heat exchangers involve flow over tubes. Those tubes have, m may have fins, uh, which have the result of increasing heat transfer, but also limits the direction of flow to only the x direction. And that means, as indicated in our fig figure here, at different y locations between different fins, the fluid temperature will vary. If there are no fins, the fluid is free to flow in the x and y direction, so the fluid temperature in the y direction into and out of the screen will become relatively homogenized. Industrial sized heat exchangers may be a shell and tube type. This is essentially a big tank with one fluid flowing over the tubes carrying a separate fluid at another temperature. You can see the inlet temp the tube inlet and outlet on the right and left hand side and the fluid on the shell side entering on the top and the bottom. Uh, this picture shows a little better how the fluid is flowing. In the top picture you see these little lines called baffled baffles. Those baffles serve two functions. First they direct the flow and increase the turbulence on the tube side fluid. You may recall from your study of convection that turbulence results in a higher convective heat transfer coefficient. Um, and second, those baffles are there as structural supports to reduce tube vib vibrations. Compact heat exchangers are those with very high surface area to volume ratios, which will result in a high heat transfer rate. And what you'll see are a very dense array of fins on these types of heat exchangers with a wide variety, vi wide variety of designs. With so many heat exchangers available, it's convenient to introduce a lump it all together parameter, the overall heat transfer coefficient. One over U times the surface area is equal to the thermal resistance to heat transfer, which we recall from Ohm's analogy. It's just the temperature difference over the heat transfer rate. This is a really simple relationship, so if we can get U, the rest of the problem is just plug and chug. Let's take the very simple case of a concentric tube heat exchanger. We have two tubes, one inside another. Here, the hot fluid is being carried through the center, and the cold fluid is flowing the cold fluid is flowing through the annulus. Heat, as indicated in the picture, is flowing from the hot fluid through the wall of the inner tube to the cold fluid in the annulus. We could define a heat transfer coefficient for the inner side, which in this case is the hot side. We could define one for the outer side, which in this case is the cold fluid. And those heat transfer coefficients do not necessarily equal, to equal one another. Um, they won't equal each other if the areas on the inner and outer sides do not, e uh, do not equal each other. So let's sum up those thermal resistances. We have a thermal resistance to convection for the inner fluid, the resistance to conduction through the inner tube wall, and the resistance to conduction through the outer fluid. Those res resistances should be familiar to us uh, from when we talked about Ohm's analogy. Uh, for radial systems back in chapter three. Sometimes if the inner tube wall thickness is very thin, we approximate those two areas, AI and AO, to be equal. And in that particular case, it really doesn't matter which side we define that overall heat transfer coefficient on. U for the cold side is equal to U for the hot side. Another thing we need to be concerned about is fouling. So the performance of heat exchangers will deteriorate, deteriorate over time as the result of accumulation of deposits on those heat transfer surfaces. Those deposits, which can happen on the hot side and the cold side, increase the thermal resistance and have to be accounted for. This, they, they often happen because of precipitation deposits like calcium from the fluids, um, from the fluid, but they may also happen due to corrosion or biological growth. We often express those fouling factors for a surface area and the units will be meter squared Kelvin per watt. Keep in mind that although you can find representative fouling factors, they will vary depending not only on the operating temperature and the fluid velocity, but with how long the unit has been in service. A new heat exchanger has a fouling factor of zero. As time increasing, that fouling factor increases. Fins are very common in heat exchangers, so we need, to, we need a way to take those things into consideration. 
Let's still consider our concentric tubes, but let's add fins to one side. That would be, this would be an array of eight fins. So remember the total thermal resistance of an array can be related to the efficiency of array. So we can incorporate the efficiency of the fins on the outer or the cold side. Do note that there's an array efficiency for the convective resistance on the cold side, as well as the fouling factor on the cold side, since there would be fouling on the fins as well. The efficiency of the array is, a re is related to the efficiency of the fin. And in this case, it looks like our tube is insulated on the outside, so an adiabatic tip condition would be appropriate. The fin parameter M is given by the square root of HP over KAC, but in the case that the thickness of the fin T is much smaller than the length, which is clearly the case here, we simplify and express M as 2H over K. In more general terms, uh, this is the equation with this, oops. This is the equation for the overall heat transfer coefficient. It takes into consideration that you may um, that you may have fins on the hot side or the cold side. It also takes into consideration that you may have fouling. Um, and if if you have if you don't have fins on the hot side or the cold side, just replace those efficiency terms with one. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.